This is Greg Troutwine with Marine Technology TV. We're here at the Ocean Business 2017 in Southampton, and very happy to be with Nick Farrell, uh, the director of Rock 7. And Nick, first and foremost, thanks for joining us. No worries. Thank you. Nice to be here. Okay. Well, Nick, I'm sure many of our viewers, many of our readers uh, know who Rock 7 is, uh, but just for the record, could you kind of describe yourself, your position, and a little overview of the company. Sure, absolutely. So, um, my name is Nick Farrell. Um, I'm director and one of the founders of Rock7. Okay. Um, been going for probably about 10 years now. Um, and we do um, two things. We provide um, tracking products um, and we provide um, data products. So, basically being able to get data back from remote places, um, essentially. Um, all of our products use Iridium satellite. Um, and all of our products use a particular bit of Iridium called SBD, it's short burst data, okay. um, which is um, a kind of cheap and inexpensive way to get little bits of data back um, from, from wherever it happens to be, mm -hmm. middle of the ocean, the Arctic, um, middle of the desert, um, that sort of thing. Can you give me a little insight? Uh, go back 10 years. When, <laughs> when the company was founded, uh, what brought you and your colleague to, uh, to found Rock7? Um, so my colleague was a, or still is, a sailor. Um, he did lots of long distance um, races and we were looking at the kind of the expense of getting um, tracking data back from the boats. Um, at that time there were relatively few races that had tracking, had live tracking of the races um, and we kind of figured well, there's a, there's a gap here. There's so many yacht races that happen all, all year round. Why aren't they all tracked? Um, the, the key reason was cost. Um, and so we, we set about trying to develop a system and a, a thing that made it cheaper for people to be able to do that sort of thing. Um, and out of that came um, a lot of, of other things, a lot of other tracking opportunities. Um, and in the last few years, probably four or five years, the data side of things, getting data back from remote places as well has, has, has you know, taken over, not taken over, but has, has, has got larger and larger. So we understand here at the show you have an updated version of your rock block. And again, you kind of uh, loosely describe that as a uh, small data technology versus uh, big data. Can you give us uh, some insight on the rock block? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we set about to make a product that made it really, really easy for people to um, to send data back from remote places. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people um, make, um, so from hobbyists who make um, uh, underwater vehicles or autonomous boats, for example, um, through to buoy manufacturers who want to be able to send data back um, mm -hmm. when it's outside of mobile phone coverage. Mm -hmm. um, but it's typically been quite hard to buy a satellite module um, and integrate it into that thing really easily. Um, so we, uh, this is the latest version. Um, so this is Rock Block 9603. Um, okay. It's the smallest um, one you can buy. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially everything is on this board that's needed for them to plug it into their system um, mm -hmm. and then be able to send and receive data from anywhere on Earth. Um, so you have the module, um, connector there, antenna on the other side, okay. so that's the antenna, and okay. there's no wow. need for a massive antenna, yeah. um, and as long as this can see the sky, yeah. um, from anywhere on earth, it will be able to send and receive data. Oh, wow. So, yeah. That's amazing. So, so is that one of the original products of the company? Um, it's kind of the second product, I would okay. say. Tracking came first, okay. um, and Rockblock came second. Okay. Um, and so, and this is the latest incarnation. They've gradually got smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see how it can get any smaller. Yeah. Um, we're running out of, out of, out of options. Um, but yeah, and, and this was really designed um, for companies who manufacture products mm -hmm. to kind of build this in. So we needed to make it as small as possible, mm -hmm. um, as compact as possible, um, so that in space-constrained boxes they can, they can put that unit in. Okay. You, you briefly mentioned a few of the applications, but just to, to really hone in on that, where am I going to find this product? Where, where is this product being used uh, globally right now? Okay, so um, in um, big applications, so we have lots of boys, um, out offshore boys um, particularly, um, that have these installed. Um, wind farms, um, so a lot of wind farms, wind turbines have them on. Um, it's kind of application where once every hour, once every 30 minutes, they send a kind of check-in message. Mm. Um, on um, buoys, for example, they will um, send a message saying, I'm here, this is mm. my position. 
Um, my light is still working on the top. Um, my battery is fully charged. My solar panels are working. Um, and in that application, it saves them um, having to send a guy out to service uh, the boy so often. Um, so it saves a lot of cost. Um, you know, it costs maybe $20 a month to get that kind of status updates back, mm -hmm. whereas sending a guy out in a boat you know, once a month is, you know, hugely expensive. Um, so that kind of thing. And then lots of smaller applications, um, like I said, autonomous boats. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, underwater vehicles that pop up every so often, send a bit of telemetry back and then go back down mm -hmm. um, underwater again. Um, wave um, energy systems, so again, status updates from, from those. Um, so all sorts of different things. Um, anything you need status updates from um, that are outside of the coverage of, of normal, you know, cellular. Fabulous. Well, Nick, again, thank you very much for your time. I know it's a busy show. I uh, hope you have a good rest of the show. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Right. This is Greg Troutline with Marine Technology TV.